One in six students accepted to an elite, top-tier, selective college comes from a family with an income in the top 1% of earners. When applicants with like SAT and ACT scores applied, those from that 1% money plateau were 34% more likely to be awarded admission. While their admission invites were not specifically because their family had money, their admissions came because of the advantages that money offered. It is confirmed that elite colleges offer admission to more students from financially elite families than any other economic group. While this has long been believed accurate, an academic paper recently confirmed our suspicions. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and this is Elite Colleges Keep Eliting. Here is what you need to know. Research reviewed the success rate of admissions applications to 12 selective colleges called the Ivies Plus, which includes Brown University, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth College, Harvard, Princeton, the University of Pennsylvania, and Yale, as well as Stanford, Duke, MIT, and the University of Chicago. The study looked at admissions information from 1999 through 2015. They reviewed family finances, standardized test scores from 2001 through 2015, student status as an athlete or legacy, and a review of non-academic components. The top 1% of family income started at $611,000 and family incomes less than $68,000 were considered low income. All the other family incomes are considered middle to upper middle class. The students admitted from this 1%, those with legacy ties and athletes who were admitted were predominantly white. Remember, less than 1% of American college students attend these 12 elite colleges, but graduates comprise 12% of Fortune 500 chief executive positions, one quarter of the US senators, and 13% of the top 0.1% of earners. As stated by Professor Donarski in the New York Times article, Quote, the political elite, the economic elite, and the intellectual elite are coming out of these schools, end quote. And the schools recognize that each of these students represents a customer lifetime return. The more financially successful the graduate, the more elite the image of the college, and the more that can financially come back to the college from those graduates. So if the standard testing scores were similar, what made the top 1% of students stand out? How were they selected over students from other financial classes? This happens through what are generally called holistic measures. These are points added to an application scorecard. The three most often mentioned are legacy points. Students receive extra credit if a family member graduated from that college. If mom or dad graduated from a school that utilizes a legacy program, their offspring are awarded points simply for that relationship. In some cases, the children of high value donors are awarded extra points whether or not there is a legacy status. Athlete points. Schools may allow students who are going to be on athletic teams representing the college to receive extra consideration. Athletes received admissions at a rate four times higher than students with commiserate measurable qualifications. And the other consistent experience, which brought more points to students, went to those who successfully graduated from elite, private, non-religious high schools. Some schools even became feeder schools. One quick note here that seemed important in the review of the material, Council recommendations were critical to admission selection for many of these schools discussed here. In some cases, counselors call admission staff to speak on behalf of students. However, that opportunity is not always known to counselors from public, overcrowded schools that are not feeder schools for selective colleges. Other holistic measurements, including employment, activities, service to family, volunteering, and personality traits are also added to the non-academic virtue scores. These are not quantifiable measures, so the scores awarded are more subjective. An article from the New York Times noted, quote, students from the top 1% with the same test scores did not have higher academic ratings, but they had significantly higher non-academic ratings, end quote. Their holistic yet subjective scores took them to the top of the admissions pile. One powerful observation is made about why the top 1% are scoring higher. It is because they have access to more. They have money for tutors, SAT and ACT preparation courses, private college application coaching, travel or experiences that translate very well in college applications. 
please hear us say that not every school utilizes the same point system or has the same approach to admissions. For example, MIT does not use legacy admissions or offer athlete preference. It must also be stated that the schools on the list have made adaptions since 2015. The schools have actively recruited lower income and first generation students. Each school is making decisions about financial support to attend their school. Large portions of the first year classes at these schools will receive some level of financial aid. Public flagship colleges are demonstrating more equitable admissions decisions. Family income is not correlated more strongly to application acceptance than lower income applicants with comparable scores. This is true for most colleges. It remains a hallmark of the more selective colleges that family financial status plays as strongly as it does. With the emphasis on equitable college admissions and the removal of legacy and donor family acceptances, colleges have to realign their application evaluation process. As stated by the MIT Dean of Admissions, Stuart Schmill, quote, it's really incumbent upon our process to tease out the difference between talent and privilege, end quote. So that you know where to find this information, Rash Chetty, and David Deming of Harvard and John Friedman of Brown, in cooperation with the National Bureau of Economic Research, published a research paper. This research reviewed admission application decisions by 12 selective colleges called the Ivies Plus. This research document was published in July 2023. Then, on July 24, 2023, the New York Times printed a synthesis of the research findings in an article authored by Atisha Batia, Claire Kane Miller, and Josh Katz. Here's the bottom line. Elite colleges have lived off the money of applicants, families, and graduate donors for generations. These practices have left the schools in a position where they will have to build out their student base to look anything close to the makeup of the American public, or they will have to decide how to skirt diversity and maintain their donor base. All of this will take a while to settle out in the admissions process. If you're considering applying to an elite college, carefully prepare yourself and your application. Changing the admissions process at elite colleges will not just change the makeup of their student population, it will change that school's image and donor base. If you found this information useful, click the like button or subscribe. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below.